Everton won't be the same club after stadium move, but then nobody is. Continuing his three-part special, Chris Beasley speaks to Simon Ingalls, a doyen in the field when it comes to football stadium writing, about Everton's proposed move to Branley Moore Dock and the issues clubs face when building new homes. Part 2, The Present Nailing the Hammers with Everton's Previous, Ill-Fated Stadium Relocation Projects. Proposed designs were out there for fans to see virtually from the start but the eagerly anticipated way to catch a glimpse of what the stadium at Bramley Moore Dock should look like goes on. Dan Mees has struck up a popular rapport with Evertonians online even though none of them has even seen what plans the U.S. architect is dreaming up for their beloved blues. The closest they've got so far was some concept slides Mies and his team produced for a fan's workshop at St. Luke's Church last spring but they merely concerned the internal dimensions of the stands and how they would compare to both domestic and European rivals. The all-important stadium exterior remains, for now, under wraps although Mies, who seems to have developed a unique affection for this special project for him, has declared. I am striving for a design that feels like it grew from the docks and can simultaneously look like it is from the future and yet has always been there. No pressure there then. What both Mies and the Everton fanbase at large can seemingly agree upon though is how not to do things when it comes to a new stadium. Given that it is a former Olympic venue built primarily for athletics, West Ham's London Stadium has become an easy target. Mies himself said. We've seen with West Ham how a club can be taken out of a historic building and into a new home that just isn't right. A move like that changes a club forever. As much as Ingalls concurs with me scathing critiques of the Hammers' controversial base, he maintains it cannot be considered a failure though. He told The Echo, West Ham are the starkest example of how through changing stadiums a club has changed completely, it's not West Ham as we used to know it. A lot of people have said it's just not my club anymore but they're still getting 56,000 people. Half of them might be rubberneckers or part-timers who fancy taking in a Premier League game but can't get it anywhere else but it would appear that the West Ham board are quite content to take their money. Everton don't really have that luxury, it's a bit more make or break in that respect. You can argue that things haven't gone wrong at West Ham though. They're still in the Premier League attracting big players and big crowds. The fact that I, and a lot of people don't like the stadium and it's not really a proper football stadium and that West Ham United are a very different entity to what they were before, so what? That's business. Bournemouth is not the club it was, Watford is not the club it was. Clubs do change their characters over the years. Blues have no choice but to move after agreeing a deal with Liverpool City Council and landowners Peel Holdings on March 23, 2017 to acquire Branley Moore Dock for a new stadium. Everton's progress has been slow but steady. After launching the first stage public consultation last autumn, Blues chiefs are planning a second stage for this summer and say they expect to submit planning applications in the second half of this year. Ingalls has been impressed with their diligence so far but reckons the club have few alternatives. He said, you could argue that in a two-horse race in a city like Liverpool, a club like Everton have no choice. West Ham wanted to keep up with the likes of Arsenal, Tottenham and Chelsea rather than aligning themselves to Fulham and Millwall and they had to take that leap. They weren't in charge of the stadium though but Everton are at the centre of their own relocation and I think they've played it very well with the consultation exercise and the work that they've done has been excellent. With West Ham it was a fait accompli, it wasn't a case of do you want to do this? Rather we're doing this, there was a vote but it was heavily loaded. Everton are doing the right thing and going about it the right way. Will it be a success? All sport is a gamble. If it was a shoe in and easy then there would be investors queuing up to put their money in. Clubs can't help but change there has been plenty of talk along the way about Everton maintaining their identity at Branley Moor Dock but while the club are eager to build a stadium that can generate an intimidating atmosphere as close to Goodison Park's bear pit as possible, Ingalls insists that clubs can't help but change through relocations. He said, will Everton still be the same club? No, it can't be. But then Manchester City is not the same club, Tottenham is not the same, the clubs that are the same tend to be in the championship. 
because Everton fans can see what's happening at Liverpool there's naturally a sense of envy so it's going to have to happen sooner rather than later otherwise the gap could just get bigger. As an Aston Villa fan I recall we had several seasons under Martin O'Neill when we were finishing just outside the elite and we were asking when are they going to make the breakthrough but the vast majority of fans knew in their heart of hearts it was more like when are the cracks going to appear and sure enough we couldn't sustain it and that could easily happen to Everton. If you've got a brand new stadium it makes it easier to sign good players and attract good managers as well as sponsorship, you've got to take that leap. I don't think they've got that choice. Down by the riverside, better late than never. Unlike Everton's most recent two attempts to leave Goodison though, Kirby and the short-lived proposal to go to Walton Hall Park, the choice that the Blues hierarchy hope will finally come to fruition will present them with an appealing geographical location and Mies has already spoken about his excitement over the prospect of sections of the stadium enjoying views of both the city and waterfront. Ingalls said. Populous are currently redesigning the Riverside stand at Fulham. At the moment it's only open on match days but by redesigning it with balconies on the outside overlooking the river you're producing a corporate market saying hire this out and you've got a nice Riverside view for your event and it's a pleasant environment to have. Everton have now got that opportunity. There's a whole side of the stadium there that can be used for all kinds of events with Riverside views. It's fantastic because it's rare for a football ground to be situated somewhere that has views that people might actually want to look out from. The great expectation is that the patience of long-suffering Evertonians will eventually pay off as after all the setbacks of the past two decades, the club finally delivers an arena that was well worth waiting for. Ingalls himself reckons the timing could actually be of major benefit to the Blues. He said, in the immediate aftermath of Hillsborough there were a lot of stadium architects chucking out ideas and it took a while for things to settle down and for sense to prevail. Relatively speaking the stadium development world in Britain is quite quiet at the moment. There's not that much going on compared with a decade or so ago. Tottenham is almost done. We still don't know if Chelsea will go ahead so you're looking at the likes of Luton, Bournemouth and Portsmouth which are with the greatest respect aren't the biggest of developments. So Everton are almost coming in at the tail end of this period. You could argue that this stadium is a heaven-sent opportunity to give Everton the boost it needs for the next century.